Who was Muhammad? The man who's been ranked the most influential person ever in Michael Hart's book, The 100, a ranking of the most influential persons in history, above Isaac Newton, Jesus Christ, is Prophet Muhammad. Muhammad was simply a man, an orphan, a farmer and shepherd, without any formal schooling. So what caused him to be ranked number one? Here are seven reasons. Number one, Muhammad's religious hierarchy. Unlike many in history, Muhammad never claimed to be anything other than a person, like any other. The difference between him and others was in receiving God's revelations. Although Muhammad himself was born in a powerful clan who controlled the city, he preached that all people are the same, regardless of their wealth and family background. This enraged the rich and powerful, including his own family. Number two, Muhammad's religious tolerance. There was never a time when the society led by him was empty of other religious minorities. Christians and Jews lived freely among Muslims practiced their religious beliefs and were judged by their own holy books and courts. Muhammad stated that ensuring that the safety of these religious minorities and protecting their places of worship was a responsibility of a Muslim leader. He even signed peace treaties with the religious minorities of neighboring communities. Number three, Muhammad's approach to slavery. He took effective steps to put an end to slavery. Since slavery was a well-established social and economical structure in Arabia, Instead of putting an abrupt end to the practice, he prescribed freeing slaves as a compensation for missing mandatory practices. For instance, if one broke a mandatory fast, one would then be told to free a slave as a compensation for the sin. Muhammad also gave clear instructions on how Muslims should treat their slaves with respect, call them as family, eat with them and give them clothes similar to their own. He declared that the slave and his master were the same in the eyes of God and will equally be judged in accordance with their deeds. Number four, Muhammad's attitude towards women. He was born at a time when people took pride in having male children. Some considered having a daughter so shameful that they would bury their baby girls alive. Many women at the time had no right to inherit and own property. In fact, they themselves were considered property and could be inherited by others. But Muhammad stood against this brutal behavior and stated that girls are blessings. He set an example for the believers with the respect he gave his own daughter, Fatima. Number five, Muhammad, the individual and the society. The way of life he prescribed was not concerning the individual only. Islam has prescribed specific rights and responsibilities towards family members, friends, and even neighbors. Muslims are even encouraged to perform mandatory acts of worship as a community, attend communal prayers, and inquire about one another's well-being. Number six, Muhammad in the material world. His status as a messenger of God did not stop him from working to earn worldly good and urging his followers to do so for their sustenance. Muslims are prohibited from pursuing a spiritual life alone. He specified working hard to sustain oneself and family financially as obedience to God and an act of worship. Number seven, Muhammad's financial system. The teaching of Muhammad included a specific financial system as well. No Muslim is entitled to everything he earns. Every Muslim has to dedicate a part of his earnings to charity for the less fortunate people. He also encouraged his followers to give each other loans and prohibited them from taking interest. Money was to be made from work, not interest according to his teachings, and charging interest would be considered waging a war against God in the Quran. Because of these seven qualities and more, Muhammad remains such an influential person today. Can you name some of his other characteristics?